Hello and welcome to the Sky at Night magazine vodcast. Now you may remember a few months ago we spoke about the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition. Well since that time hundreds of you have sent in your images to the Flickr website, the images have been judged and now the results are in. So sit back as we reveal the winners of Astronomy Photographer of the Year 2009. The long-awaited results for the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition were announced in September. As media partner for the competition, we travelled to the Royal Observatory in Greenwich for the exhibition's opening night and the announcement of the results. Before it was revealed to the public, we got a sneak peek at the exhibition and had a look at some of the display's impressive pictures. Well, we're actually inside the exhibition now in this room of really quite beautiful and stunning images. And joining me is Chris Bramley, the deputy editor of Sky Night magazine. Chris, we're just looking at the Earth and space category, and there really are some remarkable images. What ones really take your eye? What ones really uh, are really striking to you? Well, well, this one is just stunning. I mean, the, the almost fluorescent greens mm -hmm. of the aurora here really capture the eye. And it, it really captures the, kind of the moment of the aurora when... Um, gases in the upper atmosphere are excited, mm -hmm. um, and it, it just really stands out. And then these kind of star trails are lovely as well, and they mm -hmm. capture a moment that um, the eye doesn't really see in every day. And it, yeah. What makes photography so good? It actually captures the, the movement of the of the Earth absolutely um, through the stars, which is. And also this one of the Milky Way, I mean, that's our own galaxy and it's just beautifully, beautifully rendered there. It is amazing and it's, re it's a real shame that these days, you know, if you live in a city, you don't get to see this ever. Uh, you really, you, it's very rare that you actually get to see something like this from the UK, um, which is really, just looking at a picture like this, brings home how much we're really missing with uh, light pollution. So Graham, we're now looking at some of the images in the Our Solar System category, and again there's some stunning, incredible images here, particularly this one of the Clavius area by Nick Smith. That's right, I mean this is one of the best pictures of the Moon I've ever seen. It's so detailed and it feels like you're floating over the surface. In fact it reminds me a bit of the Apollo lunar missions where they would just come over the surface just before landing. Um, it's amazing to think that, that was taken by a man with a telescope in his back garden, essentially. If you look at the detail, you can see the craters within the crater, and that means there's been newer impacts by things colliding with the moon that have formed these new craters on top of the old ones. Um, it's just uh, an amazing piece of work there by Nick. Another image is by Nick Howes here of the fabulous comet Holmes. Now that really came out of nowhere, really. It brightened suddenly. What does this image mean to you? It brings back a lot of memories from when I went out to observe Comet Holmes over a few weeks period. I remember knowing where Comet Holmes was, going out, turning my binoculars to the sky, and seeing this huge object which, um, which looked exactly like that. Um, so that brings back memories of what's a quite a strange thing in the sky. It's a very strangely shaped comet. During the evening, the winners of the individual categories were announced, with a stunning star trail image taking first place in the Earth and Space section, and a lovely image of the occultation of Venus, which won Paul Smith, age 14, the title of Young Astronomy Photographer of the Year. In the Deep Space section, Martin Pugh won the top prize with his amazing image of the Horsehead Nebula, and it was this image that the judges decided was the overall winner of the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition. One of the judges for the competition was the Scar Night presenter Chris Linton. I caught up with him to talk about the judging and what he thought of the images. So Chris, what was your impression of the judging day itself? It was quite a difficult process, wasn't it? Well, mostly because you were arguing with the rest <laughs> of us, Will. But no, it was a great day. I really enjoyed myself. I couldn't believe how many good images yeah. there were. I mean, I've always known from Sky at Night that the quality of amateur imaging is fantastic. But, I mean, we had, what, 120, 130 like through that, yeah. to look at that day? And it absolutely blew me away. One of the things that really stood out was the quality of the young astrophotographers, the mm. images they were producing were really impressive for their age. Yeah, so one of my favourites was in this category actually, I, it, the one with a bit of humour, the no dogs sign with yeah. the sun dog sitting around the yeah. side. I love that because it's it's something you wouldn't normally think to photograph. Sure. You need to know the subject to understand what you're looking at yeah. and yet it 
told the viewer something, you immediately think about it the moment you see that image. So I love that one. And the lunar shot was, was pretty good as yeah. well. Yeah, definitely. What did you think of the winner, the Horsehead Nebula? Uh, I, I can still see that image. I haven't been into the exhibition yet. It's still early in the evening, mm. but when I shut my eyes, I can still see the fine detail in the horse head, mm. particularly the, the rays in the curtain behind. I think it, it's a worthy winner from somebody who ranks up there with the best of the professional photographers. I think David Malin would be proud to take, have taken that shot. I was really pleased. Uh, as I say, it was a very difficult choice, but um, every single image um, that got through to the finals was fantastic. And so we, we've got a brilliant exhibition out of it. We've had a fantastic launch event this evening. We've got superb images. I think we've all been overwhelmed by the quality of the images, particularly from the amateur photographers and, and also the young photographers as well, who have just uh, done a mind-blowing job with real enthusiasm and energy and emotion in their photography. Amongst the hustle and bustle of the evening, I asked the Royal Observatory's exhibition manager, Dan Matthews, about his thoughts on this year's competition. It was fantastic running an international photography competition because what we do here at the observatory, we, we put on exhibitions, um, but to actually run an international competition that, that had entrance from five continents, um, a, a fantastic array of images, was a real experience. Um, you wouldn't imagine the, the amount of work that goes into actually putting a competition like this together is just, you, you'd never know because all you have at the end are 20 images in an exhibition and some nice quotes from judges and uh, photographers, but the amount of work that goes into it is so much, but it, it's so rewarding because you see the final result there, it looks great, and uh, can't wait to do it again next year. A few of the winners were at the opening evening to receive their prizes. Michael O'Connell won the Our Solar System category with his image entitled Blue Sky Moon. I spoke to him about his image. Well, Michael, congratulations on your winning image. How did you go about taking the picture? Well, I was outside in my back garden uh, one morning. It was quite sunny for a change. And uh, just saw the moon rising over the eastern horizon and uh, quite a nice crescent uh, shape to it. I just thought it was something different for me, so I thought it quite nice to capture the moment when, when, as the moon was rising. What did you think of the other images in the exhibition? Well, I'm amazed, that, to be honest, that I've actually uh, uh, come first in the category. I mean, the, the standard was extremely high. And you're talking about from uh, astronomers the world over, uh, Australia, Canada, Bahrain. Um, I'm, I'm just amazed, to be honest. And uh, it's, it's very nicely presented as well inside the way it, it's all illuminated inside. How does it feel to be a category winner in the first astronomy photographer of the year? Well, it's, it's a great honour, uh, to be honest. Um, I never thought I would get this far. I um, entered the image uh, more just with the fun than anything else. And uh, when I see the other images, to be honest, I'm flattered and, and honoured to, to have won in that category. And uh, I'm just absolutely delighted. The exhibition is now open at the Royal Observatory Greenwich until January the 10th, 2010, and it's free to get in. Don't forget to also pick up a copy of Scar at Night magazine this month, where we'll show you all of the winning images.